All right, good morning, guys. Welcome back to another sanctuary vlog. Today is a rainy day out here. Coming to feed the goats and the pigs. You guys look nice and dry. Looks like they were inside the barn the whole time and just came running out when they saw me. I know, we'll get you some food, guys. Oh my goodness, guys, it's raining. It's raining. Oh, you're all wet. Daisy sounds very upset about the rain. Petunia, it's raining. Oh, Petunia, it's raining. Oh, you're all wet. You were not in the barn. Oh, Daisy girl. Bunch of wet pigs. There's no food out there yet, Julie. Nope. She's going. Gotta go check. Julie! Come here, pig. Hi, Tony. Julie! Come here, big pig. Come back in the barn. It's dry. There's no food out there. Nope. She don't care. Petunia. Oh, Petunia's going in the barn. You stay dry. Julie! Come here, big girl. Come on. Come here, Julie. Oh, come here. Let's keep you dry. You look like a hippo. Girl. Might be rainy, but it's still beautiful out. I love it. I don't mind the rain. Makes everything look so green and lush and bright. So nice out. Clover does not like the rain though. Poor Clovey. Poor Clo beans. Oh. But it's all bright and lush and green like this. It reminds me of when I used to, I actually used to live in Costa Rica for a few months working on a project. It was just a few months, so I don't know if you could say live, but I mean, well, I was. <laughs> it's, uh, it was just a couple of months staying down there working on a crocodile project, but, and I've also visited there, God, I don't even, like over 20 different times. Um, so it's been a lot of time down there and uh, it's been a while and this really makes me miss it and really makes me want to go back. It's, Definitely gives off like a Monte Verde vibe. All right, now it's time for Olaf to get his meds. Yeah, you're gonna be a good boy and take all your meds. Yeah. So we still have the heat lamps on in here since it's been a little cooler. I mean, even now with all this rain and whatnot, it's still a little chilly. So just keeping the heat lamps on even during the day when it's like this. You take this one. You take your medicine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You wanna take it? Oh, the good boy! Yay, good boy! There we go. There's another one. Yeah. Oh, look at this good boy. Yes, good boy. What a good boy! Yeah. Oh my goodness, Clo. You hear all the rain? Yeah. That rain don't stop that strut. Look at that strut. Look at that good girl. Look at that good girl, Clo. Look at that good girl. What a pretty girl. Look at that strut. Chloe, 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 Chloe. Oh my goodness, Clo. There we go. Look at Chloe go. Yeah. Good girl, Clo. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Clo. Yay. Look at Clo go. Look at Chloe. Look at this good girl. Oh, look at this good girl. What a good girl. Hey, stinky boy. You like the rain? Yeah. Oh, this big boy ate all of his food. Look at that. What a good boy. What a good boy, Jet. Oh, Jet. Oh, you look like you want pets. But you're unsure. Come here. Let me pet you. Come here. Oh, yes. There you go. It's okay. Come here. Come here. Let me pet you. Come here. Let me pet you. Oh, let me pet you. Oh, come here. 
Nope. He says, nope. You're gonna run. You're gonna run. Old jet. Old jet. Come here. Come here. I'm gonna pet you. You wanna play with your toy? Not impressed. There's no food. You ate it. Here. Here's your toy? Nope. Come here. Come here. Oh, don't bite me though. You're being nice. You're being nice boy. See, I can tell you want to be pet. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's a good boy chat. There we go. Give in to the cuddles. There you go, boy. Oh, nope, and we're done. We're done, okay. Okay. That's enough interaction for a week. Yeah. So something interesting that I did want to kind of talk about is uh, neoteny. So if you don't know what neoteny is, here's a new vocabulary word for you. So that's the retention of juvenile characteristics in an adult. And so that can mean behaviorally, that can mean physically. Um, so there's a bunch of different things like that. So domestication brings out neoteny. So when we domesticate an animal like a dog and we breed them for, you know, thousands of generations to try to get them from a wolf to a dog, we look for cute things. We like babies, you know, naturally. We like babies, they're cute and adorable. And so we try to retain those baby traits in an adult animal. So he naturally, even though he's not domesticated, he has kind of neoteny traits like having a larger ears and a big head compared to body size and things like that, which is just what his species looks like. Um, but that makes him look more cute, right? Um, now, here's the thing is that retention of juvenile characteristics into adulthood, right? So when you look at your dog the way like your dog will want to play with you all the time. An adult wolf is not nearly as playful as a baby wolf because you have to survive. But retaining that playfulness into adulthood is a good example of neoteny. And then also um, like physically, like uh, excessive like tail wagging and like all this kind of stuff. I should have I should have researched this more before I started. So I'm just talking off the top of my head right now, guys. So um, if I was going to do like an actual like breakdown on this, I would have researched some more points. But the reason I'm bringing it up is I was watching a video of some cute baby wombats earlier and it was super cute and adorable. And everybody's like, oh, my God, I want one and they don't make pets. They're wild animals, just like he is a wild animal. He doesn't make a good pet. And so when you see a baby wild animal and it's really cute and adorable, people think it's gonna stay like that and it won't. Even though like puppies, even as adults, like a dog, a puppy will kind of stay, look at that cute yawn, will kind of stay and retain that neoteny through domestication and it will be kind of still like a puppy when it's an adult, if you were to compare like an adult dog to an adult wolf and its behavior, okay? So where I'm going with this, is people don't understand that and then you have a baby wild animal and they think it's really cute and adorable because it is and then they think it's going to stay like that as an adult and then it hits sexual maturity and then it wants to fight you or bite you or mate with you um there's all these different things why wild animals don't make good pets and you know you hear me say this kind of stuff just constantly but i really wanted to bring it up with him because he's so cute and adorable and it is an example of that neoteny again where like he does have a lot of traits that you would see in a little tiny puppy or something like that but he is an adult wild animal um but yeah so point of the whole story is wild animals don't make good pets i should really try to uh, break this down better and make a whole video just talking about this topic though so here's our new male fox hi buddy his name is shippo you okay hi and he is a biter he is not friendly you're okay he just came in to say hi hi big guy he's a lot bigger than the females. I'm just here to get your bowl. We're gonna get you some new food, okay? We're gonna get you some new food, buddy. 
Okay. Oh, he's just sitting in the rain cold. You know, there's a little shelter down here for you. You can get out of the rain, but he doesn't understand that yet. You know, he's lived the last three years of his life instead of a tiny wire cage where it's literally wire all the way around, no shelter from the elements, nothing. So I don't think he even knows that he can go into his little shelter here and get out of the rain. It's really sad. You're okay, buddy. I mean, I think I'll figure it out over time, but it's just awful, you know? Um, I can't believe it's legal in the United States that they keep animals in that condition where he literally lives his entire life inside this little tiny wire cage, can't even touch floor. It's just wire in the bottom, wire in the top, wire in the sides, no shelter, nothing. And they allow them to live like that. And that's legal in the United States for fur farming. It's just unbelievable. Here, buddy, you'll be so much happier if you just go down inside your little shelter. You're okay. It's all right. So he lived three years of his life. He's three years old. Uh, the females lived only a year like that. And so I think they adapted a lot more quickly because their mind was not molded by that prison. And he's going to poop. That's nice. Very nice. But yeah, what I was trying to say though is a, uh, it's kind of hard to be serious when you're sitting here pooping. Um, but I was trying to say something pretty serious is that just like humans, your mind is molded by your surroundings. And so since he was stuck in this wire cage for three years, it really did mold his mind in what he thinks is normal or what to do or how to act and things like that. Meanwhile, the females, they adapted pretty quickly because they'd only been there for about a year. All right, so these are some of the produce donations we got yesterday. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a bunch of these to these guys and be very happy. Some of them have like tags and stuff I still gotta pull off, but um, like that one obviously, but like all these greens are good. Look how happy they are. There we go. You guys want tomatoes? There's a tomato for Daisy. Here, Julie. There we go. Look at the goats. They're very happy. Oh, nope. Not good enough. Oh, hi, Julie. Can you sit? Can you sit, Julie? Sit, Petunia. Go, up, Petunia. The Petunia's sitting. You sitting? Yeah? Good. All right, Petunia, sit, sit. Look at that good sit, Tony. Oh, whole apple, or half an apple. Cut them in half so there's no seeds in there. Oh, got Daisy coming up behind me. Can you sit? Can you sit? Come on, come on. You can do it, you can do it, go, go. Oh, that blasted. Oh my God, that tomato. Oh, I don't have nothing. Let me get one. Can you sit, Daisy? Daisy, Daisy, sit. Good girl, oh, good girl, Daisy. Can you sit, Petunia? Sit, sit, oh, good pig. The whole tomato. Julie, can you sit, Julie? Hey, can you sit for me? No? Petunia, sit. You're still chomping. You're still chomping. Julie, sit. Sit, sit. Go, pig. There you go. We had a bunch of greens for the goats. Look at you sitting. Oh, there's gold pig petunia. Are you sitting, Daisy? Yeah, you go, girl, Daisy. There you go. Ooh, that'll be quick.
Might be a rainy day, but it's a happy one for the pigs and goats. Oh, look at that happy petunia. You look very fashionable, Petunia. There you go, Toffee. Yeah, Toffee's still pretty nervous. Come here, Kit Kat. There you go, babies. So these are the Patagonian Mara. And yeah, we still got the tarp up because next week uh, it might get down into the 40s again. So we're gonna keep the tarp up for a little bit. I know it looks like crap, but it is what it is. So this is the female, Topanga. Here's the male. Stealing the bull, as always. Hi, Topanga. Can I pet you? Oh, this good girl. The male will not let me pet him, though. Here. So they're getting their pellets, sweet potato, carrot, pepper. Yeah, but they really just seem to love that pellet mix more than anything. All right, so we're feeding the foxes now. Come here, Yue. This is for you. Here, stop eating hazels. Or Kira, whoever you are. Come here. Yeah, well, they go back and forth anyways. They're fine. You, you are the one that we worry about. You, you thieving fox. She seems to be the favorite. Everybody loves her, probably because of her attitude. And she, I mean, she's a good-looking fox, too. I love those eyes. She's definitely a good-looking animal, but everybody's like, Hazel's my favorite. Come on, Kira. There you go. Come here, UA. There we're over there. So I'm still gonna play bodyguard, though. I'm gonna sit right here, because Hazel will run up here and steal everything immediately if I don't, so. Just gonna sit here, let them finish eating. And then we're gonna feed the male. So we'll get to him in a second. Hi, Shippo. Hi, baby. You want some food? Ooh, that's snapping. You heard that? Oh yeah, he, he bites. Here's Jaws snap. Okay. Good. Maybe we should put it on the floor so it doesn't flip it. I think he's trying to bury it. Oh, that's what he's doing. Oh, we're gonna feed the kawadis. Hi, baby. Hi. So they're getting a turkey neck. Sorry, comment. Uh, turkey neck, banana, grape. You don't know the dog. I'm not happy about the dog. Uh, turkey neck, banana, grape, apple, monkey biscuit, omnivore diet, baby food. Uh, strawberry, sweet potato, and some dried bugs. You guys are very vocal today. Yes. All right, so the quadies are locked in over there, so we're gonna go ahead and do a deep clean. 
And you see all this tracking, tracking all that poop everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down with some bleach a little bit. Well, this is diluted bleach, by the way. So we put some of this stuff down. Everything's already wet. I like to soak it all first, but it's a rainy day. So everything's already pretty wet. I should have soaked this more. Yeah, that's what I told you. <laughs> well, I thought it rained on it enough. Well, we can soak it and just put bleach and then go feed the birds and then come back. No, I mean, it's going. I'm doing it. Just... Work smarter, not harder. I work smarter, not harder. I work harder, not smarter. Yes. I can't same. even say it. Yes. <laughs> so... Our coatis have been becoming very vocal as spring comes around. And I think um, they're hitting sexual maturity and it's spring and all that stuff. I don't know, that's my guess, what do you think? I would say that's accurate, yeah. Cause they are- I would say, thank goodness we uh, had uh, Blanco neutered before he came to us. <laughs> yes, yeah, cause uh, yeah, it was crazy. The other day he was, he was going at it with somebody. With his sister. Ew. Um, yeah, they're siblings. But he doesn't have... Reproductive you know. organs. So nothing will happen. But it's just, it's weird to see the dynamic change. Um, and we're still trying to figure it out. I don't think a whole lot of people, besides like zoos, have this many kawadis together. You know, most people have like one, maybe two. So the fact that we have five, we kind of get to see like it all play out in the dynamics. and. Where we learn every day, you know? Yeah. Well, it's crazy to me. It's like just one, you know, two weeks ago to now, like the difference is significant as far as like how much they vocalize and what they're doing. And they're being a little scrappy with each other. Yeah, they're being very scrappy. Bam, you better look watch at, out. I'm going to crush you. Look at Shippo on his. Oh, yeah. He really likes the high platform up there. Yeah, they've been getting a little... A little scrappy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, two of the females are being pretty, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like kind of mounting each other almost. So, I don't know what's going on. I'm so glad we did the fox enclosure back here where it's like just peaceful and kind of hidden for them, you know? Mm-hmm. So they can kind of decompress, especially this poor guy that has spent the last three years. I haven't even really seen him exploring yet. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's really left that platform. No, I think that's just safe for him and that's where he hangs out. It's crazy. They all have hide boxes and none of them use it. They all prefer the high platform. Now, do you think that's because they didn't have them before and they, they you know, they're just not familiar, don't really know what to do? I don't know why. I don't know if they just like being higher because they can see more, I, they feel more safe. I'm really not sure. Uh, we can try to put a hide box on the platform and see if he uses it. Yeah. Either way, it's fine. Um, the roof for the entire fox enclosure is completely covered. So it doesn't get wet or anything. He's totally uh, safe from like all the elements, but well, maybe Hazel too will, you know, like having a companion will make him feel better. We'll just swap we'll to see. Poor guy. I can't imagine what he went through there for yeah. three years. I was talking about that on my uh, vlog earlier, just like the psychological damage that it does yeah. to them. Not only physical, but, you know, just they don't mentally. Even, they don't even play with toys still. They don't know you what know? to do. They don't really. They don't understand it. Yeah. It's really sad. It is sad. I'm going to spray there. this stuff down. What are you doing up there, Van? <laughs> How'd you get up there? <laughs> you taking a call, Lily? Oh, what is that? The first time I've ever seen her play with anything.
And if you didn't see it before, that is a fake phone that we gave to them because they're obsessed with breaking real phones. I want to take that so I can turn it back on for you, but I don't want to get bit. Oh, which I will. Can I turn that back on for you? you I just got to reach in there. No. <laughs> That's a great way to lose your hand. But she looks so sweet. She's, she's got, not. She's right got now, ears like a teddy bear. She's not sweet. Does that mean she's a sweet pet? Hi, Lily girl. What a good girl. What a good girl you being. Butterfingers over here. Don't do it. I'm leaning away. Nope. Nope. Can I please turn it back on for you? You just wait. Just trying to get me. Off, as you can see. <laughs> Lily, that place sounds. She's over it. Jelly bean. Oh, you getting a little worm? Nope, drop that. Got some apple. There's no blueberries today or grapes. Oh no, what are you gonna do? You got some strawberry. So he's got some bugs, some strawberries, some sweet potato, peach, scrim or uh. Hard-boiled egg, apple, and some bugs. He is not impressed. Oh, dinner time for the prairie dogs. Dinner time? Well, whatever. Breakfast? <laughs> Lunch? Food time for the prairie dogs. I like that sweet potato. That's Poppy right there. He even likes his sweet potatoes so much, he's not trying to climb me. It's a miracle. Kiki's popping up behind you. Cheeky! You gonna come out, Cheeky? Maybe. Oh, you're gonna destroy the tunnel? Look at Bambi sneaking away. Look. Behind the well. I bet you that's where the bees are, huh? Bam! You gonna go get stung in the face again? Yeah? <laughs> you see her? No, I can't get it to focus past the wire. Bambi! Someone was digging. Alright, so since it rained a lot today, it's going to rain some more tomorrow. We're going to try to leaf blow a little bit and then put down some fresh seed so we grow some more grass over here. Wait, do you mind you though? <laughs> that big guy. Putting down some new grass for you. Yeah. Mm. Got some leaves on there. Oh, that's a hard piece, huh? There you go. That's head soft. Somebody's like, all you feed him is cactus. No, nah, nah, we give him like, you know, bacon cheeseburgers too. No, this is naturally what these guys love to eat. We also give them uh, lettuce, we give them tortoise chow, we give them hay and other things, but cactus is definitely one of the best things you can be giving them in here this is the aldabra enclosure and then put some grass seeds down for them <laughs>
All right, guys, so I'm driving down south now. So if you're kind of familiar with my schedule, you'll know that on weekends, I usually drive all the way down south to Miami to be able to do the tours with Casper tomorrow. So that's what I'm heading down for. So it means that this vlog gets cut short as far as the animal content goes. But um, yeah, got to do this. So about every weekend, I do about a 12 hour round trip drive uh, to be able to go down there because it's basically the only income I'm having right now. So heading down to go ahead and do that. That's how I'm supporting the sanctuary. In addition to, you know, donations and people helping out with the Amazon wish list, which is really awesome, but I end up having to pay a lot of it, the expenses just completely out of my own pocket. So that's why I'm going down right now to, uh, you know, do the tours with Casper and everything. Although this weekend is forecasted for really bad weather. So I actually just spent like an hour on the phone calling everybody I had booked for the tours and seeing if I can get people to reschedule since it's supposed to be really rough out. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of them could not reschedule and so um they flew in specifically for this which like on one hand always makes you feel like oh my god it's so awesome people literally fly in just for my tours i get people fly in from other countries just for my tour which is like the biggest compliment you could get but then when it comes to rescheduling yeah makes it impossible so um some of the people could some of the people couldn't so i'm driving down either way right now even though tomorrow might be a total wash as far as the weather goes so we're gonna try we're gonna do what we can and then uh gabby is back home taking care of the entire sanctuary and running the whole thing by herself so you know shout out to her just out there kicking butt and doing everything um having to do this splitting our time like this is so hard and so difficult you know and as a couple it's it sucks you know just about every weekend i gotta leave all weekend to go down and make money for us and then she's up there by herself and it's just it's just awful you know so um just something that you know i don't really talk about often but i've had a few people ask about and i don't really talk about my personal stuff or anything like that i try to keep it about the animals but um yeah this is definitely hard and this is part of running the sanctuary and doing everything for the animals is having to uh make sacrifices like this and do this 12 hour round trip drive every weekend and then be able to make money and come back and support the sanctuary so that's what we're doing but uh anyways i'll go ahead and end the video guys so thanks for watching and we'll see y'all next time